If you have your Bibles, be turning to Joshua chapter 4. Joshua chapter 4 will be serving as our lesson text this morning. And as you're turning there, I must say the, 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 the thought for this lesson came from Sister Ruby. And she knows what, where we're going this morning because Wednesday night after services, we were, we were here, everyone had gone, and we were talking with Sister Ruby. And she, talk, she gave me some good ideas from a lesson she had heard on Joshua chapter 4 at a funeral one time. And I thought, you know, this would make a good sermon. And so as we spoke Wednesday night, as she spoke and as Susan and I listened, the, the wheels in my mind got to turning. And so the lesson this morning is around some of the conversation we had Wednesday night. And I hope that, and I hope that the lesson this morning that I have prepared will be beneficial to us all, will be thought-provoking, give, give us some things to think about as it relates to, to who we are. The term and concept of memorial is defined by Webster as that which preserves the memory of something, anything that serves to keep in memory. You know, there are many, many memorials we observe in this day and age, and really throughout history. Funerals are memorials in that they are designed for the living, not the dead. Funerals serve to memorialize the deceased and to remind the living of the life that the deceased individual lived. You go to cemeteries, gravestones serve as memorials reminding us of who the deceased were and when they, when they lived and who their family was. Even days are set aside in our country, such as Memorial Day, to remember certain events, and in particular to remember those on that day who were lost in combat for our freedom. Monuments are erected to help people remember certain individuals or events from the past. You go to Washington, D.C., you will go find the Washington Monument, the Lincoln Memorial, and, and so forth. So we understand what memorials signify. They are designed to remind us, to help us keep in memory, to enable us in the present to never forget the past. Do you realize that God himself has used in still uses memorials to convey important lessons to, to mankind and in particular to his own special or peculiar people. You go all the way back to the book of Genesis and, and you go back to Genesis chapter 9. After Noah and his family had left the ark, after the floods had receded and, the, and there was dry land once again, God put a rainbow in the cloud. And that bow was given by God as a covenant between God and the earth, signifying that never again would God destroy the earth with a flood. It serves as a memorial as well. When we see rainbow, the rainbow in the cloud today, you and I can look back on this promise. It serves as a memorial, as it were, to remind us of this great promise God had made. To never destroy the earth with water again. Didn't say he wouldn't never destroy the earth again, but he said he'd never destroy it with water. You go on down to Exodus, the book of Exodus, chapters 12 through 14, record for us the instituting of the Passover feast, given by God to Israel to, to serve to them as a memorial of the price that was paid for their redemption from Egypt. Then you go to 1 Corinthians chapter 11, a lesson for us as Christians today. And as we read verses 23 through 26, we are reminded that we have a memorial that we observe, that, that we just observed ourselves a few moments ago, and that we do observe weekly to remind us, to bring back to our memory of Christ's death, burial, and resurrection. And as we partake, and as we partook of the Lord's Supper this morning, we indeed showed forth His death until He comes again. That precious feast divine is, serves to remind us never to forget the solemn events 
that took place on Calvary's tree. But then we come back to the Old Testament now. And we approach Joshua chapter 4 and we have recorded in this text a seemingly odd memorial designed by, by God for Israel. Joshua chapter 3 records for us Israel on the verge of entering the promised land of Canaan making provisions, preparations for crossing the Jordan and, and it records for us the actual beginning of the passage over Jordan on dry land and we understand that it was God who dried up the Jordan River when the priest bore the ark stood in the midst of the Jordan. It was God by His power that enabled Israel to cross over on dry land. Joshua chapter 4 verses 1 through 9 we have God given the designation for the memorial to take 12 men out of each tribe and those 12 men would select a stone from the Jordan River as they continued to cross over the Jordan. Verses 10 through 19 we have the completion of the passage over Jordan. In verses 20 through 23 we have the actual memorial itself instituted in those 12 stones, verse number 20, which they took out of Jordan, did Joshua pitch in Gilgal. As with other memorials, this memorial was designed as a reminder. And it may seem odd to us, and it may have seemed odd to Israel at the time, but it, but it is a very significant memorial. The question to consider this morning very briefly is this. What did Israel need to always remember? What did God want Israel to never forget? What do we as Christians today need to remember? Why, and why was it important for Israel to, to not forget the things that God wanted them to remember? And why is it important for us today to not forget these things? It is these latter questions that we are going to seek to answer in the course of this lesson. And so today, as we think about our faith in God, as we think about our reverence for God, and as we think about our lives that we live for God, I want us to be reminded to don't forget to remember. Never forget to remember. And I want to set forth some practical lessons that can be gleaned from, from these memorial stones of Joshua chapter 4, which were designed to help the children of Israel then, and by way of application for us today, of who they were, where they had come from, what God had did for them, where they were going and why they were to remember. We want to show that the memorial that God designed for His people then and today was designed to remind His people then and now never for, to, to never forget their identity, their past, their blessings, their future, but above all, their sovereign ruler, God Himself. And so as we contemplate this text, I want to consider this morning that the memorial stones of Joshua chapter 4 served as a reminder to Israel then, and they serve as a reminder by way of application for us today to never forget who they were, who we are, God's people. As we relate this to Israel, we understand that they were the physical descendants of Abraham. Ultimately, it would be through Israel that Christ would be brought into this world through which we are the spiritual children of Abraham by, by faith in Christ Jesus. But you go back to Israel's history, we understand that God had them as His chosen people for a time. When, when Jacob or Israel and his family wound up in Egypt, as God had designed, they were there and as they were in Egypt for that period of time, there at the close of the book of Genesis, they grew into a mighty nation. Ultimately, they were enslaved by the Egyptians. But you look at it, Exodus chapter 2, verses 23 and 24, and we are told that while they were in this terrible bondage to Egypt, that God heard their cry. But not only did he hear their cry, he remembered his promise to bring his people out. The psalmist said in Psalm 135 verse 4 that God chose Jacob unto himself and Israel for his peculiar treasure. God treasured them. Time and again throughout the Old Testament, God, Israel is referred to as being chosen by God or as being God's peculiar people. So Joshua chapter 4 
One of the great purposes of these memorial stones, I believe, that we can glean from this, was to remind Israel to never forget God, to never forget their identity, who they were, to never forget that they were God's people. Notice verse 23 of chapter 4. You will find that, that God through Joshua says that, that all the people of the earth might know the hand of the Lord, that it is mighty, that ye, ye might fear the Lord your God forever. Israel constantly needed to remember who they were. That they were a distinct people with a distinct identity. They, they were separate. They were different from, from the nations round about them. Remembering who they were was the only way they could maintain their distinctiveness from the rest of the world. Sadly, history records that Israel ultimately failed in this regard. Will we learn from history ourselves? Because as Christians, we need to, because we need to remember ourselves what Christ did for you and for me. We need to remember that He gave Himself for us, that He might redeem us from all iniquity and purify unto Himself a peculiar people and the idea of peculiar there is a people for God's own possession. Zealous of good works. We have been redeemed through the blood of the Lamb. We have been purified unto Christ. We are God's peculiar people today. We are different from the rest of the world, are we not? We wear the most beautiful name of all, Christian. Because we belong to Christ. You can't have a Christian without Christ. We can't be a Christian without Christ. We must be zealous of good works. As Titus 2.14 tells us. We must be on fire in our work for the Lord. Understanding what He did. Understanding who we are. Our identity. And Peter gives us some help into this in 1 Peter chapter 2 verse 9. When he reminded his list readers then that they were a chosen generation. And we have been chosen by God through our obedience to the gospel. We have been adopted into the God's spiritual family through having been born again, through right of the new birth, which is obedience to the gospel. But not only have we been chosen, we make up a royal priesthood. We are a kingdom of priests serving under our great high priest, Christ Jesus, who is king over his spiritual kingdom, of which we are priests and citizens thereof. But also in that same text, Peter identifies us as a peculiar people, a distinct people, with a distinctive identity, a distinctive purpose but above all, a distinctive destiny from the rest of the world because we have the hope of eternal life. And we understand that the world itself, all who are in the world today, all who are living can have this same hope, but it is only through and in Christ Jesus that we enjoy this hope. We need to remember who we are, our identity. We need to remember our purpose and again, you notice there in 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 9, Peter states our purpose, that we are to show forth the praises of Him. That is, we are to glorify Him. And we glorify Him by how we live, how we act. We glorify Him by our worship this morning. And we glorify Him by our labor for Him. And we do that because He has called us out of darkness that is, the darkness of sin, into His marvelous light. That's the beauty of the gospel. That's the blessings that come from obeying the gospel. That is why we must proclaim the gospel to a world that lies in darkness so that they can be pulled from the realm of darkness and into the marvelous light. Of Christ Jesus. Our responsibility is to maintain our distinctiveness in an indistinct world.
And we do that by being not conformed to this world, but by rather living the transformed life. We are to be holy as God is holy. When we forget who we are, we will lose our distinctiveness. And when we do that, we become just like the rest of the world. God's memorial reminds us to never forget who we are. But it also serves to remind Israel and serves to remind us today of where they had been and where we have been. And that is bondage. You think about the past that Israel had. They, they were experienced a hard life of bondage in Egypt and to the Egyptians. When you go back to Exodus chapter 1 and you read verses 8 through 14, and in particular verses 11 through 14, you, you, get, a, you get a vivid picture of, of the misery that, that Israel experienced while in Egypt. In verse number 11, the text records that they were afflicted with burdens placed upon them by the Egyptians. In verse number 13, we are told that they served with rigor. The idea of rigor there is severity or cruelty. The Egyptians were hard taskmasters. They were cruel. They were wicked. They were severe. As a result, they lived bitter lives. Verse number 14. This way of life was a miserable way to live. It was made miserable because of the hard bondage. And this bondage was physical in mortar and in brick and in all manner of service in the field. All their service were in, that is, the Egyptians made them, that is, the Israelites serve, was with severity. The memorial stones here serve to remind Israel of their past. Where they had been. At one time they were in Egypt, but no more. They served to remind us of our past, where we were. We were in bondage at one time ourselves. Not physical bondage, but bondage in sin, bondage to sin. And certainly when we examine these three verses in Exodus chapter 1, we find their description, these physical principles certainly hold true to the spiritual, because sin afflicts. There's nothing good to be found with sin, is there? Sin is a cruel taskmaster. It exacts a terrible price. It brings bitterness of life. It is indeed hard bondage. As Christians today, God's memorial reminds us of where we had been at one time. We were in bondage. But it reminds us of where we are now. We are out of bondage. It further serves to remind us of the price that was paid for our deliverance. We're going to talk about that more in just a moment. Because of where we were, we must never forget that. We must never forget the past so, so that we do not want to go back. That's what this serves to remind us. Don't go back. Don't look back. But not only does it remind us of the past, this memorial reminds Israel of what God did for them and it reminds us of what God has done for us. Israel needed to be reminded that it was God who brought them out of the land of Egypt. He freed them from, from Egyptian bondage. And again, Exodus chapters 12 and following give us the historical account of their deliverance. They needed to be reminded that it was God who delivered them at the Red Sea from the pursuing e Egyptians. Remember that great statement that Moses made to the Israelites when they were fearful? When they saw the pursuing Egyptians? When he told them to stand still and see the salvation of Jehovah, they passed over on dry ground, whereas the Egyptians perished in the sea. 
They needed to be reminded that God had provided their physical needs while they wandered in the wilderness. He fed them with manna and with quail and provided them with water when they thirsted. Exodus chapter 16 and 17 as examples. They need to be reminded that God did all of this and even in spite of their constant unbelief, their constant murmuring and complaining and their desire to return to Egypt. They needed to be reminded that it was God who brought them over a dry land in crossing the Jordan. They needed to be reminded that God had blessed them tremendously. They needed to be reminded and to be thankful to God for all He had done for them. As Christians today, we need to be reminded of what God has done for us. He has brought us out of the bondage of sin through the blood of His Son, Christ Jesus. Revelation chapter 1 verse 5 teaches and affirms that we are washed from our sins. We are loosed from our sins through the blood of Christ. Chapter 7 and verse 14, those who came out of that great tribulation were those who had washed and made their robes white in the blood of the Lamb. When we are baptized into Christ, according to Romans chapter 6, verses 3 through 6, we are baptized into Christ's death. That is, we obey a like form of Christ's death, burial, and resurrection. We die to sin, just as Christ died for our sins. Just as Christ was crucified, we crucify the old man of sin. Just as Christ was buried in the heart of the earth, we are buried in the watery grave of baptism. And just as Christ was raised to life, we are raised to walk in newness of life. And as Christians, we have done that. We have been delivered from the bondage of sin. We have been delivered from that past life. We enjoy a new life in Christ Jesus today. We need to be reminded of that. We need to be reminded that God provides us with the spiritual spiritual provisions necessary to live in this present world. We enjoy all spiritual blessings in Christ Jesus, according to Ephesians chapter 1 and verse number 3. Notice again, we emphasize the word all, not some spiritual blessings, not most spiritual blessings, but as Christians, we enjoy all spiritual blessings. That is, their completeness. Every single spiritual blessing God has, we enjoy So we need to be reminded that God has blessed us tremendously. And we need to be reminded that God wants us never to forget who we are, where we were, and what He has done. Peter in 2 Peter chapter 1 in verse number 9 talks about the possibility of forgetting. If we don't add these virtues that he talked about in the context to our lives, we are spiritually blind, we cannot see afar off, but above all, we have forgotten that we have been purged from our old sins. There's that term, forgetfulness. It is possible to forget that text teaches Why would we want to forget? Why would we want to forget all that God has done for us? Why would we want to forget the great gift of His dear Son? You remember the day you obeyed the gospel? That day should stick in our minds for all times. Never forget it. Never forget what God has done for you. These stones teach us to remember. Israel needed to be reminded of these things, but they also needed to be reminded of where they were going. And we need to be reminded of where we are going. As they crossed Jordan, they were entering the promised land of Canaan. As Christians, we are on a journey ourselves today. Today. 
we're not journeying to a physical promised land. We're journeying to a spiritual. We're, we're, we're on, on the straight and narrow way to that heavenly home. The promised land of God. That God has promised to the faithful in eternity. The memorial stones were to remind Israel of all that had occurred in their past. Of all the hardships that they had incurred. Of all the trials they had endured. But above all of why they had not entered in the first place. It served to remind them of the foolishness of not trusting God. They had to wander in the wilderness for 40 years. That first generation of Israelites fell as a result of their lack of faith in God. These memorial stones serve to remind them that they were going to enter into a land flowing with milk and honey, a land that was given to them by God. And it served to remind them they were not going to be able to enter that land without the help of God, without faith in God. As Christians today, Christ has pro promised us that heavenly home, that place which is prepared for us. But we can't go there without God's help. Without God's word. The word of God directs our footsteps. It lights the path. It, it directs our steps. And it directs us towards heaven. That's why we live in accordance to it. That's why we walk in the light as He is in the light. Understanding that as we do so... The blood of Christ continually cleanses us. There is a rest that remains for the people of God, and that is heavenly rest, eternal life. That's the journey we are on right now. We haven't made it to heaven yet. We understand that. But we understand that if we trust in the promises of God, and that's what it takes, faith, is that heaven will be ours in eternity. That is why we live by faith. We walk by faith, not by sight. That is why we look by faith to those things which are not seen. The things that we do see are temporal, but the things that we don't see are eternal. And that's why we look unto Jesus who is the author and finisher of our faith. Israel needed to be reminded of where they were going. We need to be reminded of where we are going. We should never forget this. But then they needed to be reminded of why they were to remember. And we need to be reminded of why we are to remember Notice verse 24 of Joshua chapter 4. Why observe this memorial? Why was Israel to observe this memorial? Well, God through Joshua explains it thusly, that all the people of the earth might know the hand of the Lord, that it is mighty, that ye might fear the Lord your God forever. Number one, they were to remember so that the earth would know God. Why are we to remember? So people living today could come to know God. That's why we are to live Christ-like in this present world. How can we live Christ-like if we don't remember Christ in our everyday life? <coughs> but then number two, so godly fear, godly reverence would continue, which ensured fidelity unto God. We need to reverence God. We need to respect God. And we do that by living for God. Is it a challenge to live a godly life in an ungodly world? There is no doubt about that. But yet, think about the promises that God has made that motivate godly living. If God be for us, who can be against us? I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. Be thou faithful unto death, and I will give unto thee the crown of life. That's motivation. So we need to remember God at all times. These twelve memorial stones were a reminder to Israel of their past, their present, 
ultimately their future. Reminded them of who they were, where they had come from, what God had did for them, where they were going, and why they were to remember. Certainly the same lessons apply to us today, remembering the teaching of Romans chapter 15, verse number 4, that whatsoever things were written aforetime were written for our learning, that we through patience and comfort of the Scriptures might have hope. As Christians, we must, never, we must remember to never forget our past, to never forget the present, and never forget what the future holds for us. Never forget who we are, God's people, the family of God. Never forget where we have come from. We were in sin. We were dead in sin. We are now dead to sin. Never forget what God has done for us, how richly He has blessed us and continues to bless us. Never forget where we are going. These are all the reasons why we must never forget. As children of God, I hope this lesson this morning has helped us and reminded us to never forget these basic truths gleaned from a study of these memorial stones because such a memorial was designed not just to remember the past, but to prepare focus on the present and look to the future with hope. May we as children of God today live lives with our eyes on the past, our eyes on the present, and our eyes on the future, ever clinging to the Lord our God by way of remembering Him. So as we close this lesson, dear brothers and sisters in Christ, don't forget to remember. The lesson is yours. If you're here this morning and you're not a child of God, this lesson has enumerated the blessings that God offers. But this lesson, we've also discussed how we access those blessings, how we enjoy those blessings through obeying a like form of Christ's death, burial, and resurrection. But also involved in that is obviously having heard the word being led to faith, which is produced through hearing God's word, which in turn leads you to turn from sin and repentance and confess your faith in Christ, and then you die to sin. You can do that this morning. However, as a child of God, if you have forgotten, if you have forgotten all of these things, and you've allowed yourself to drift away from Christ, come back home this morning, rededicate your life, repent and confess your sins, pray to God for forgiveness, and He will forgive. He wants to forgive you. But you have to make the conscious decision to come. Remember what God has done for you and remember what He will do for you once more by returning to Him. And do that right now as together we stand, as we sing.